Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel yet? Please do that. We've got some great extra content uh, all the time, including a brand new video we just posted about Joe and Hunter Biden and the heartfelt letters they exchange. Uh, this is something I think you're going to appreciate. It's at youtube.com slash stew does America letters to the Bidens. Uh, check it out. It's uh, there and you can subscribe as well as hitting the bell for notifications. Get the notification whenever a new one is posted. Uh, Glenn Beck is going to channel his inner beastie boy to tell us about Biden's sabotage of America. One of Joe's flunkies has a little teensy weensy little bit of trouble defending a two state solution for Palestine. We'll show you that. But we're going to start by doing Trump's political persecution. And, you know, look, a lot of people talk a lot about Donald Trump being politically persecuted. Uh, number one on that list, Donald Trump. Uh, he talks about it all the time. In fact, whether he's completely innocent or completely guilty of whatever he's talking about, he complains about being politically persecuted. That's just kind of what he does. We all sort of know that. And, you know, there's some people would complain that maybe there's a little bit of a cry wolf, uh, you know, aspect to this, where sometimes he says he's the victim when he's not really the victim. Maybe he brought one on himself. But... That's not always the case. In fact, this New York case is a specific incidence of him being completely right when he says he's being politically persecuted. And I'm going to prove that to you here today because it's important for you to know that sometimes these things are just completely true. Sometimes Donald Trump is just being screwed because he's Donald Trump. And I know the media doesn't like to hear that. And I know this is one of those things that can be a, a little sensitive for some people. But, you know, because some people are just very triggered by Donald Trump, whether it's in defense or, uh, you know, uh, offended by him. But let me lay this out for you because it's overwhelming. The evidence is overwhelming. We'll start with the verdict. Of course, $450 million. A, uh, the, the trial penalty will exceed $450 million. The media loves talking about how much this is going to cost him. Now, of course, once he goes through the appeal process, there's a good chance he won't actually be paying that much money, but they don't care. They're going to keep saying it anyway. Um, the New York Attorney General says she may seize Trump's assets if he can't pay the $354 million fine. The $450 million includes interest. And of course, other publications have seized on that. They're all getting their fun little headlines, breaking this down by the minute. Uh, Donald Trump owes $87,000 of daily interest on his historic fraud penalty, says the Daily News. Well, why break it down just by the day? Why not also break it down every month? A business insider says Trump is racking up $2.6 million in interest for every month. He hasn't paid his $355 million fine. A 9% interest rate. 9%. 9%. 9%. Now, as you're looking at this, you're saying, okay, well, it's a big fine. But he's a big company, really rich guy, says he's got $10 billion. What does the fine even mean to him? And I honestly don't know. I don't know what that means to him. I mean, a lot of people speculate he doesn't actually have $10 billion. That's what he says he has. If he has $10 billion, probably not that big of a deal. Uh, I mean, anytime you have to spend $350 million, it's a big deal. But, you know, if you have $10 billion, it gets it, it cushions that a little bit. It cushions it a little bit. Um, I don't think Donald Trump is going to be living in a studio apartment anytime soon. I don't think you have to worry about that. But still... Unfair is unfair. And that's kind of the question that we land on here, because we know this number is big, but is it rational for what actually happened? Now, we know that there was no victim here, and that's a key part of this story. It's not like um, a situation where he lied to the bank, uh, they gave him this loan, and then he didn't pay it back. And the, the, the bank can rightfully say, hey, he lied to us, that's why we gave him the loan. And the fact that he didn't pay us back, we got screwed on that. This guy should be punished. That would be a rational exchange of information if that were the case. However, it's not the case. The case was that Donald Trump allegedly lied about uh, how much his properties were valued at. Now, you've seen some of the details of these properties. Certainly seems to me that Donald Trump's estimates are a lot closer to reality than what the government is saying. But let's throw that out for a second. Let's just toss that to the side. He supposedly lied about his, the values of these properties, which gave him a lower interest rate. Um, at least he was trying for a lowest in, lower interest rate. Now, the banks themselves say, well, actually, we do our own checking on that. We check to see, 
if uh, if the, you know these values are right, we look at them ourselves. Everybody makes up values that you know we're not comfortable with, but we gave him the loan because we thought he was a good risk. And at the end of the day, he paid us back, so we don't really care. You know, that's kind of where the banks are on this. It's just that Letitia James is coming after Donald Trump because she hates him and she promised to go after him. That's really, you know, we always complain about politicians not living up to their campaign promises. Well, this was her campaign promise to go after Donald Trump really with any means necessary. So that's what she's doing. But a a moment on MSNBC of all places had me pause and think about this a little bit differently because we can all say and complain about this big number, but is this entire situation normal? If it's normal and other people get the same types of penalties for the similar types of actions as Donald Trump, we could kind of say, okay, we might not like this law, but it's still fair. It's not political persecution. It might just be a bad law. But if it's way out of whack with every other thing we know about this statute, then there's no other place to go but political persecution. And in this particular case, that is the only path forward. MSNBC Katie Tour demands, is this fair after judge finds Trump and bans him from business in New York? Let me show you a bit of this exchange because the question is really important and the answer you might inherently know, right? You might know this is, of course this isn't fair. Look at this number. But to when you look at the actual details of the way this law has been used, it is mind blowing. Watch this. Is this fair to go after Donald Trump like this in this environment? Is my question. (laughs) Well, look, I think what you said about the statute is absolutely true. Tristan Snell, who just joined us at the table and has used the statute. I was going to introduce him, but we (laughs) can introduce him now as well. Tristan Snell is here. He's used the statute. Well, let's ask Tristan. You use this 6312 in the Trump University suit, a a university that was scamming people, wasn't actually giving them useful information for them to do business. And wasn't licensed and wasn't a university, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, is it fair? Look, the thing is that the notion that 6312 is this sort of weird thing that shouldn't be applied and so forth and so on, this this statute and the statute that was based on, which is called the Martin Act, which may be the one that people are more familiar with, the Martin Act applies to securities. These law, the Martin Act was put on the books in New York about a hundred years ago. We have a lot of case law to Mm. support this. This this statute is used. That's enough. We get it. You got a lot of case law to support this, and that's true. It has been around for a long time. But that gives us information as to how it's been used in the past. Has it been used like this? Has there been a lot of $354 million fines in the past? Have there been a lot of instances where businesses were shut down or the person involved could not operate the business for three years? Is that how this has been used? Well, in a scattered shower of journalism, the Associated Press decided to look into this in detail. And what they found is remarkable. Dissolving Trump's business empire would stand apart in history of the New York fraud law. Now, look, if you are surprised that the Associated Press is going to bat to give you the truth about this topic, uh, I am too. And I want to get into that a little bit here in a second. Just the fact that this article was ever even printed is mesmerizing. But let me give you the details of what they found when they look back at the 70 plus years history of this law. An Associated Press analysis of nearly 70 years of civil cases under the law showed that such a penalty, the one facing Donald Trump, has only been imposed a dozen previous times. And Trump's case stands apart in a significant way. It is the only big business found that was threatened with a shutdown without a showing of obvious victims and major losses. So stop and think about that for a second. If only shut down 12 companies, okay, 12 in the entire history, and this is the only one that did not show specific damages. We talked a little bit about that a couple minutes ago. There's no real victims here, right? The the banks made loans, uh, Donald Trump paid them back, everyone seemed to be happy, and then Letitia James stepped in. So let's go through some of the examples. There is one other example uh, that is somewhat similar, and I say that in in sort of air quotes because the the case of Donald Trump's business size makes this completely uh, incomparable, but let me give it to you anyway. 
Um, AP review, AP's review of nearly 150 reported cases since New York repeated fraud statute was passed in 1956 showed that nearly every previous time a, cus- a company was taken away, victims and losses were key factors. Customers had lost money or bought defective products or never received service orders, uh, services ordered, leaving them cheated and angry. What's more, businesses were taken over almost always as a last resort to stop a fraud in progress and protect potential victims. Again, there's no victims here. Now, that a lot of people will stop there. And it's 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 fair to point out that even if a victim isn't um, uh, uh, present, that doesn't mean there's not a crime committed, right? Like if you, uh, if your idea is I'm going to set up a murder of Bob and you fail, you, you're going to run, you're, you know, you hire someone as a hitman and you're supposed to run him over with his van, and he misses, and Bob's fine, didn't even know it happened. It's still a crime to try to kill Bob, right? In this particular circumstance, if you went in and you completely exaggerated all of your properties and got like a really low interest rate. Um, You know, you could still say that that's wrong, right? It's not, it doesn't mean just because there's no victims doesn't mean there's absolutely no crime. But in this particular case, having no victims usually means a minor fine. It might mean something of that nature. That's what normally would happen in this situation. Now, as I mentioned, there is one case the AP found uh, that kind of uh, talks about no victims really and also a business shutdown. Here's the case. The only case the AP found of a business dissolved under the anti-fraud law without citing actual victims or losses was a relatively small company closed in 1972, more than 50 years ago, for writing term papers for college students. In that case, the attorney general said the victim was the integrity of the educational process. So they didn't have an actual victim. They kind of just made a, it's like when they gave a man of the year out to you that one year. Uh, it, you know, it's like, oh, well, the victim is the educational process. Now you might say this, okay, well, uh, was there any victim in this case? You know, I mean, the person who bought the, you know, the, the term paper that was written for them actually got the service they wanted and the term paper got paid for the services rendered. But still, like you could see an obvious violation of the system there. And that, that's the w- one example in 70 years that they actually found. Let me give you some of the other places they've closed down and give you just a sense as to what normally happens under this law. Because if you're going to shut down a company based on this anti-fraud law, normally what you have are tons and tons of victims who have been obviously ripped off. Obviously ripped off. Let me give you some examples. A breast cancer nonprofit was shut down a dozen years ago, for instance, for using nearly all of its $9 million in donations to pay for director salaries, perks, and other expenses instead of funding free mammograms, research, and help for survivors. Okay, so breast cancer charity is like, hey, give us money. We're going to help people with breast cancer. And then they keep all the money for the directors and perks and all sorts of other stuff, and then never actually give out any free mammograms. Obvious fraud, right? Like, that's the type of thing you'd think they would shut down uh, a, a, a charity for. And, of course, obvious victims, the donors donated to something that they didn't actually get. Next up, a private equity firm faking big investment success was closed down after stealing millions of dollars from thousands of investors. The victim's quite clear. The investors went to get these investments, and in fact, their money was actually stolen. There's no parallel at all with what they accused Donald Trump of doing and his company of doing. Another example, a mental health facility was shuttered for looting $4 million from public funds while neglecting patients. The patients are the victims. The taxpayers are the victims. Totally unlike the Donald Trump case. An auto lender that allegedly charged hidden usurious um, uh, interest rates got to stay in business last year if it paid a fine and didn't commit fraud in the future. So they're Charging hidden high interest rates to customers, the victims are clear, the customers paying these rates, totally getting ripped off, and they let them stay in business, didn't shut them down, didn't threat the shutdown, as long as they promised to be good next time. Next up, a judge refused a request to shut down a river rafting company in 2011 after a customer drowned and the attorney general showed it was repeatedly using unlicensed guides 
or none at all. Instead, he ordered only that the owner post a $50,000 bond and clean up his act. The company is still being run under a different name by the same family today. They were killing people in the water and they let them keep their company open in the same place that they're getting Donald Trump for $354 million. They're drowning people in the river. That's okay, apparently. Or how about this one? A judge in 2001 declined to appoint a receiver to take over a porn site despite millions of dollars of illegal credit card charges to hundreds of customers who thought they were getting free tours. I don't think they give away free tours to porn sites, but that could just be me. Uh, in fact, the owners tried to cover up their tricks and shifted money overseas. Still, the judge said appointing a receiver, which they've already done with Donald Trump, was an extraordinary remedy that should be used sparingly and that a preliminary injunction was good enough. And if that wasn't enough, if fooling people who were looking for free porn tours wasn't enough to the tune of millions of dollars and then trying to go overseas to avoid trouble, that's not enough to shut them down. Listen to this last detail. Years later, prosecutors in a separate criminal case said the Gambino mob family was running the business and put several operators in prison. A porn site run by the Gambino crime family was allowed to continue to operate. But not Donald Trump. All of these cases are completely different than the Trump case. Many of them continued to operate and didn't get fines anywhere close to the fines that Donald Trump received. The only case that's even mildly similar was one of a term paper writing company in 1972. And of course, a small company and the fine wasn't nearly as large. The bottom line here is it's blatantly obvious. What you thought is true. The facts back you up. If you thought, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. Donald Trump seems like he's getting politically persecuted. You're right in this case. And I want to add this one last thing before we leave. This report from the Associated Press is incredibly thorough. They go through all of this. They show you the facts, even though it hurts the candidate. They certainly want to be president. And as I'm reading it, I'm first of all shocked that the Associated Press would actually do this. And I was pleased at first that they would go through all of this trouble to write this report actually defending Donald Trump of all people. And then I paused and I realized if, if the media kept doing stuff like this, I would be totally out of a job. I would be unemployed in minutes. If the media actually did their job, I'm homeless, okay? I am screwed, my kids have no food. My wife is going to blatantly leave me the second that she can to get to anybody who can actually hold down a job because what my skill set is has absolutely no value in a world where the, the media actually does their job and journalism exists. So while I am happy and I will applaud the Associated Press for doing this this one time, please stop because I have a uh, mortgage to pay, uh, you know, colleges are coming up for kids, and frankly, I like to take nice vacations. So please, Associated Press, stop doing your job immediately. Well, whether you have three minutes in the morning or 30 minutes in the morning, no matter how much time you have, you, need to keep, you want to keep your uh, face wrinkle free. You can do that with Gen 90. It is the new instant wrinkle treatment from GenuCell, the perfect Valentine's Day gift for yourself or your Valentine. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it around the eyes, around the forehead, uh, the crow's feet, the laugh lines, whatever the issue is. 
you can start uh, with Gen 90 and it starts working in seconds. There's a reason why GenuCell has 400% the customer loyalty of other skincare brands. It's the best in skincare and you're going to love it. Gen 90 is, uh, has got a, a special sale going on now, GenuCell.com. It is, of course, included in the best seller package, that Gen 90. So before you go overseas and get some sort of harsh procedure for thousands of dollars, try Gen 90 first. Make your fine lines and wrinkles disappear wherever they are and before you even leave the room. And uh, you can order Gen 90 with every most popular package for over 70% off right now. You also get free shipping and a spa box with every order. GenuCell.com slash stew. G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. It's GenuCell.com slash stew. I am joined once again by Glenn Beck. He has a brand new special coming up next at 9 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to stay tuned to that. It's called Exposing the Secret White House Plans for America's Sabotage. Glenn, how's it going? <laughs> Who comes up with the titles? I don't know. I, <laughs> they're, and they're getting longer and longer. I feel like, too, you're always surprised by them when I read them. Because I am. Week, yeah. I don't write the titles right, yeah. of the show. I'm mm -hmm. like... What show are we doing now? Yeah. And then it always yeah. has one of the words is always capitalized. Because I guess like the internet, they, they have to know what word has the, yeah. like I, the I, emphasis I, on we it. We may not even have a human doing the titles anymore. <laughs> Maybe just, <laughs> just run the algorithm, <laughs> tell us what would work. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, I will, say, I will say there's been a, we, we, we were um, talking about this Texas election this week. And there's a bunch of, I don't know, judges or whatever. <laughs> and no one can remember their names because no one knows anything about these things, right? <laughs> right. And so you came up with a great idea to come up with a jingle so that people would remember their names. Yes. Now you can see how well that's worked because I can't even remember the names. I can't remember their names. Finley? I know there's one's Lee. Shank? Shank, Shank Lee Finley? Shank. Oh, my gosh. See, it's working. Oh, it's my working. gosh, it's working. But the way you wound up doing it is just going to AI and having AI with one sentence will come up with a song in any genre yeah. that mentions these specific people. And we played them all, and they were all pretty terrible. Terrible, horrible. But like- Songwriters, you have, you have a few more years. I, a few more weeks, let's be honest about <laughs> okay, it with AI. Yeah, well. um, but I was thinking about that, what if we just put in like, host show about conservative topics in the news, enter, and then it could just generate three hours of our voices talking, we don't even have to show up to work anymore. I'm just throwing it out there. Thoughts? Uh, well, that's assuming I'm not already AI-generated. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Well, because there are days you come in and it doesn't seem exactly <laughs> like you want to be there talking about well, the news anymore. I'm actually, for the first time this week, I'm, I'm actually thinking, what the hell is wrong with us? What are we doing? <laughs> um, you know, the we've first always, time, really? No, we've always mm. thought, you know, this is dangerous, what we're doing. Um... You know, physically, I'm so sick and tired of people on the left go. And then I got somebody who called me up and said, you should die. Really? I mean, that's <laughs> in an everyday what, occurrence yeah. with us. You know what I mean? And a lot of times it's me calling you. Yeah, saying I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I actually appreciate I was up in New York just recently and uh, somebody somebody got I mean, I was, sit, I was standing there at the crosswalk with security and I said, do you see him? And he's like, oh, yeah, I got him. And we just, you could just tell. Okay, You could just tell, tell what? this person mm -hmm. hates your guts. Okay, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I was expecting, you know, some scene or something. And I have to tell you, he's the most efficient hater I've ever, I mean, I was, I, I actually turned to him and I said, that was good. Mm -mm. He, all he did is he walked by me, he just barely bumped my shoulder, mm -hmm. and he just said, die. And I thought, <laughs> wow. that is efficient. That's the that best is... interaction I've ever heard of someone in New York City. That's, <laughs> it I... is. It is. <laughs> That's it is. really impressive. But uh, So wait, you know, why? But, what are you thinking? Because now we're in it. We are in it. You know, talking to Tucker Carlson this week with the NSA, him, you know, him texting me while he's, you know, hey, I'm just waiting for Putin. I'm like, I don't know who you are. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't like Putin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, knowing what they're doing to us, our business, what they're, um, the techniques that they're using. I mean, we are, in, in some ways, we are true enemies of the state. And if this election doesn't work out well, mm -hmm. how does it? It's going to be interesting to watch to see how this all works out. It is. You know what I mean? I, and I thought to myself, 
I'm 60 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have a lot, a lot of life left in me that I would rather in, not in spend theory. in jail, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what the hell are we doing? And then I immediately thought, oh, yeah. You know, Washington. No, Washington, mm -hmm. when they went to him for the Constitution. Yeah. And, you know, he only wanted to be a farmer. I, Stu, you know me. I've always, all I want to do is tell jokes and be funny. And right. just, you know, I don't <laughs> want to do it. And, um, and so when Washington, the, the, the uh, nation was falling apart, um, and somebody rode in the middle of the night, probably somebody important, but I don't remember their name, they rode the middle of the night from Philadelphia. We got to Mount Vernon. It was a rainstorm, 3 o'clock in the morning. Guy's knocking on the door, and George Washington gets up, and he opens the door, and here's this guy in the rain, and uh, he says, General Washington. Now, he's no longer a general. He's a farmer. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted to do was farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, General Washington, you've got to come to Philadelphia. The Articles of Confederation are collapsing and you're the only man that can hold it together. And Washington said, have I not yet done enough for my country and slammed the door? Mm. Now he obviously <laughs> had, yeah, right. I haven't, <laughs> okay? So I'm not comparing that. Right. But it's kind of that, that feeling of, uh, man, I don't wanna do this anymore, but, uh, it's for the country, it's for it's our yeah. families, our children. Wait, so you're saying you don't want to do it because um, it's you're worried about scary. the NSA? Or you're saying yeah, you don't want to do it scary. because the news is so depressing? No, it's getting scary. Yeah. For, I mean, it's been scary for a while, but more in theory. Right. Now that I know exactly how this is working and how it is connected on a global scale with the NSAs of the world, you know, Five Eyes Intelligence, um, if they decide to crack down, it, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be hard to find people. Mm. You mentioned uh, in the Tucker Carlson interview, he talked about how he wanted to have this interview with Vladimir Putin and tried to do it. And last time they, the NSA spy, he said he, they spied on his messages and leaked into the New York Times. Oh, yeah. And then he said it happened again for this interview. Yeah. No, just to let them know. You know, it's like with Putin, when Putin said, uh, no, I, I know you studied history to Tucker. Mm -hmm. And I asked Tucker about this. I said, did you notice that? And he's like, no. He, he three, three times, he said something personal about Tucker just to say, mm. I know everything about you, okay? It's an intimidation thing. That's the second phone call or the, the, the second watching of him on the NSA. And he's told me, he said, Glenn, I know they're watching everything. I know they're listening to everything, reading everything. I'm the same way. I know they are. Um, so what are you going to do? Just be who you are. Um, but when they broke in the second time and found out about his, his uh, meeting with Putin, the New York Times didn't print anything but they had two guys call and say, when is your meeting with Putin? That is only to intimidate. That's, mm. to t that's what Putin did. That's the United States government saying, you have no secrets. We know everything you're doing, okay? Just to freak him out. Mm -hmm. um, we're not this country. We, we are becoming a KGB state. That, that's... Not good, especially when you have half the country being called. You know, I was talking to somebody today, one of the producers today. What story was it? Um, it was before you got there because, I mean, you work two, you know, two minutes a day. But, um, I have to. <laughs> um, but I, uh, we were in a conversation and I said, no, 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 they are Calling them, what was it? it it's, it's, it's almost like insurrectionists, okay? Mm -hmm. There's some, oh, uh, Christian nationalists. Okay. I said that's a very carefully selected term that came out of nowhere. And yet everybody in the news media knows it. Everybody knows it. Why do they know it? Why is, it, why is Donald Trump called an insurrectionist? Why, are, why was January 6th? It was... Everywhere, this is an insurrection, an insurrection, an insurrection. 
Well, no, it wasn't. But why do they keep saying it? That's to trigger the Patriot Act. They've made us domestic terrorists, Christian nationalists. There's this, this um, treaty that was done, or not treaty, but uh, agreement that was done with the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and national intelligence. These people are not supposed to be working together, okay? But they are. And um, we'll get into it in a show in a couple of weeks. But they, they put this thing together right towards the end of 2015, 2016. And it's become weaponized against the citizens of the United States. So when they call you something, notice they're not using racist as much. They're using Christian nationalists. Mm -hmm. That's not because we've grown thick skin. It's because now it holds legal meanings and triggers things that the government now can do. I mean, you can see it with an insurrectionist as they try to take him off the ballot using the Constitution and an insurrection. Correct. As, as the pathway there. Um, tell me more about Tucker. What was your impression of him? Because, I mean, there was this idea that he's just, you know, handling, carrying water for Vladimir Putin. He's not. What, 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 did, what did you think he took from all of this? I mean, I would encourage people to watch the interview. It's at blazetv.com uh, slash stew. The promo code is stew if you want to check it out. The whole thing is is really interesting. But I mean, we, it, he deserves to be heard on this, obviously. Oh, yeah. He's going to be criticized. And he needs what, what to be his... heard in a, um, I think, and this is what I tried to do. He needs to be heard in a place that's not out to get him, but will hold his feet to the fire. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm, if I understand what you're saying, I'll stop asking you know, if I don't understand what you're saying, I'm going to keep pursuing. And I did on one thing, and that is, what, what was your point on saying, you know, the supermarkets are great and the subway is great? I mean, you know why that's great. And uh, after two attempts at this, he, I finally understood that he wasn't saying it's so great. He's saying we should be pissed off that this, comp this country who is a crap hole of a country for, for decades it's mm -hmm. been a crap hole, and we know that it is run so poorly. Still, they have streets that are cleaner than ours, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, I said to him, you can do that in a dictatorship. Right. You know, there's no crime because we kill you without a trial. Right. Okay? And he said, no, I understand that. But we used to have clean streets. Why don't we now? Why don't we now? And he was making, using that as, as a point to say the American politician and the American system is intentionally sabotaging our cities. It's easy to know why there's so much crime on the streets. We know. We know. And it doesn't have to be this way. And he was trying to inspire people to stand up and say to our government, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I went back to him then a third time and... Um, and I said, so I just want to make sure I understand because there are people that do want a dictatorship, you know, on both sides. There are mm -hmm. people that are like, yeah, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a problem with all those lefties if we could just get rid of all those lefties, right. you know, or vice versa. Sure. So um, that's bad. And so I said to him, Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. That is the only way forward. That's what I believe. Do you believe that? And it was very honest and very telling. If anybody thought he was, you know, pro-dictator, he just looked at me for a second. And he was like, of course. He didn't even think that people would think that about what he's saying. It's interesting because they do think that about what he's saying. I know, but saying. he is so isolated. He's living in the middle of the woods. He really unplugs. He really doesn't care. Um, and that you definitely get that sense. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. He'll say what he's going to say. Right. Why would he? He and even mentioned good. That at one I point. mean, Stu, yeah. when we were in the hot seat like that, mm -hmm. I didn't care at all. I mean, you know, because you know we paid a high, heavy price for it. I'm just like him. However, unlike him, I had very smart, plugged-in people like you around me that would go, "Hold on." You have to be aware of this is being said right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he has that. 
Yeah, I mean, he's obviously building something brand new. So, yeah, yeah it's maybe in the process. Uh, fascinating interview. Uh, Glenn Beck with Tucker Carlson. It was his first interview back on American soil uh, after being in Russia, and it's really worth your time. And, of course, the special is coming up as well, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's exposing the secret White House plans for America's sabotage, because that one's in capitals. <laughs> uh, so stay tuned. Uh, as always, be sure to watch with blazetv.com slash stew. The promo code is stew. You'll save 20 bucks right now. Glenn, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. You know, the Biden administration's a mess. And if you might know by, of course, the president, who is obviously borderline senile, and, you know, people like Corinne Jean-Pierre, there's a collection of people who are just either incompetent, um, have maybe mental capacity issues like President Biden, or are just like obvious diversity hires like Corinne Jean-Pierre. And I don't know if this is the situation with this particular person. Uh, her name is Bonnie Jenkins. She's the U.S. Undersecretary of State for Arms Control and International Security, or USOS FACAIS, or USOS FACE, as I always would call that position. Um, but so she was in there. She's talking to Brian Mast. He's a re Republican from Florida. And they're talking about what the heck to do with the Israel Palestine situation. And I would like to honestly just play you this entire seven minute clip because it's so incredible, but I can't do that. But this is basically, Mast is trying to get her to, uh, to give some sort of understanding as to like, okay, she wants a two state solution in Palestine and is, uh, with Israel, but like, who's gonna run that? How's that gonna work? He tries over and over and over again to get her to explain this. It doesn't seem like she's put one minute of thought into it. Watch. Do you assess that a Palestinian state would be more likely to be designated as a major non-NATO ally like Israel or Egypt, or would you assess that they would have to be labeled a state sponsor of terror? I can't answer created? that question. You, have you assessed that? Okay. I, these are questions that I'm not in a position to answer. I'm asking if you, you are in the position to answer if you have assessed whether that would be the case. You came here say, sitting before Congress saying you are here representing the idea that there should be a Palestinian state. You said you looked at it objectively, which you probably didn't. And I'm asking if you, if you assessed that. So you can answer whether you assessed something or I, not. What I can answer is this is part of a discussion that I I don't think that I should be making those decisions or, or answering these questions right now. Answering what you don't think you should answer whether you assess something is amazing. This is after like five minutes of this where he tries to get her to admit that she, uh, just ask her, have you objectively assessed this? She can't answer that. She eventually says she did. I, it almost seemed honestly like she didn't know what objectively meant. Like I, she didn't know what the word meant. It was so perplexing to watch. You have to go watch this entire clip. We'll, we'll tweet it out uh, at uh, Stu Does America. Um, make sure you check this out. It's really, really incredible. And again, this is not some like random intern. Uh, this is the... Undersecretary of State for Arms Control and International Security, or USOS FASE. So check that out. Um, Supreme Court rejects an appeal from three GOP House members over the $500 mask fines. It, we, Thomas Massey, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Ralph Norman, uh, all, all were bringing a case here trying to say, hey, wait a minute, you're trying to fine us for not wearing a mask. That was dumb. We didn't want to wear masks. Uh, they're going to have to, some of these fines could actually add up to a lot of money. And it, doesn't, it looks like they're going to have to actually pay them, which is incredible. And the Biden administration has canceled $1.2 billion in student loans with a new repayment, repayment plan. Now, of course, we know the Supreme Court has over and over and over again told him he can't do this. And yet he continues to do it anyway because he doesn't care about this. Remember the whole, oh, uh, Donald Trump doesn't care about our system of government. He doesn't care about our institutions. The Biden administration has done this over and over again. Well, the eviction moratorium is another good example of it. This one is maybe the most blatant, the student loan situation. And again, you have to ask yourself, like, you take out a loan. What do you think is going to happen? You're supposed to pay it back, right? Like, I don't know, when you take out a loan, don't you know that? Of course you know that. And they're only giving away, they're only forgiving the debt of people who have taken over 10 years to pay this back. So if you decided to be super conscientious and work really hard and get a second job and pay it off quickly, you get nothing. 
But if you just have paid the minimum payment for 10 years, then congratulations, you're debt free. Call Dave Ramsey right away and celebrate. Well, when you absolutely positively have to buy or sell a home and, you know, sometimes you have to do it, it's real estate agents I trust. That's where you should go first. It's Glenn's company. He started it a long time ago because he was tired of dealing with incompetent real estate agents and figured, you know, you might be in the same position because some, you know, look, some agents are awesome. They, they can really help your experience and some can make it miserable. And that's why the agents that real estate agents I trust uh, works with are the people who are the best in their field. They, they, they're top sellers, they know the lay of the land, they have the best practices to get you and your family where you need to go. And if you have a question like, hey, like, should I repaint this room? Should I uh, renovate this area before I sell the house? They're gonna have an answer for you. They're gonna know how to break this down. Realestateagentsitrust.com, the name kinda says it all. It's realestateagentsitrust.com, a free service to you. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Well, of course, we had the Kansas City Super Bowl parade shooting that happened uh, after the Super Bowl. And, you know, terrible situation. Someone died. We have all these people who were shot. You know, terrible situation. Of course, it became the latest cause to come try to take your guns away. That's the way this works. Gun control advocates were out, including President Biden. And, of course, they said this is the reason this proves we need gun control. This is crazy. Of course, it doesn't prove anything like that, and we went through a lot of the reasons right after the situation happened, but we didn't have all the details yet. Of course, now we do have the one major detail we were waiting for, and it's not going to surprise you at all. Court documents show firearm used in Kansas City Super Bowl parade was stolen. So it's already illegal. The gun was stolen. That's not allowed. Computer check revealed the firearm to be stolen out of Kansas City, Missouri. So any law that you pass would just make it double illegal and would not do anything to the people who were willing to ignore the murder laws in this country. Uh, They're fine ignoring those. They had already stolen the gun. But I'm sure if you did another series of background checks, can we put in background checks when people steal guns? Why not like put in a background check stand in each uh, person's house so that if someone comes in to steal guns, we can just background check them there. Can we do that? All right, we're gonna work on that. Uh, get you, get you. Let me know when you get yours installed so that we can take care of this gun violence problem. Okay, so here's what happened. Um, how many of you, be honest, are big players of the game uh, Kim Kardashian Hollywood on your phone. I know a lot of you are. Uh, if you don't know what the game is and if you're one of those weird people who haven't been following it closely, here's, here's the trailer for the game. Hey, bestie. I love your style. You look stunning. <laughs> oh my God, you're screwed. Good job. Good job. Yes, Kim Kardashian can say good job to you too. Now, this Welcome to the A-list. This is a game where you're Kim Kardashian's assistant and you build a virtual life and you can eventually get your own jets and have vacations and get married and have children and all these things. It was like a 10, 10 years ago this game came out. I didn't even know, I've never even heard of it. However, I mean, I play it all the time, but I hadn't, you know, I don't want you to know that. Um, bottom line is they're canceling the game. Now, Kim Kardashian game fans brace for end to their lavish virtual lives. They spent a decade building virtual lives, and now it's all being taken away. It's very, very sad. But you can improve your life instead by watching Sarah Gonzalez, Gonzalez Unfiltered. It is a brand new show here on Blaze TV, 7 p.m. Eastern, right before this program. Check it out on YouTube and Blaze TV.